Shooting games have been a staple genre of the video gaming industry almost since its very inception. Ever since engineers found ways to cram tiny little electronic pixels into cartridges and sell them to people, people have found a way to hone their psychopathic tendencies in a remarkably safe and carefree way. It's one of the reasons shooting games are by far one of the most popular genres in the entire industry, and for decades the formula for these shooting games was more or less the same. You had guns and bad guys, and sometimes you had stories that served to enable you you to use the guns to shoot the bad guys and then eventually other people got to be everyone else's bad guy online with their friends and they could shoot each other all, all the time together yeah and and for two or more decades these shooting games got better and got more features and got more high quality pixels packed into discs instead and then sold to consumers and got larger companies making the pixels that then pack them into the disc to be sold to consumers Though much changed, they also stayed relatively the same. You still needed controllers to operate the guns, you still needed a screen to view the game and see what you were doing, you still needed a console to read the disc of pixels that you bought, and you still needed the game itself. And then out of nowhere in 2012, a man named Palmer Lucky came up with a device that took all of these principles and concepts and revolutionized them so that the controllers became like your hands and the screen was on your on your face to trick your brain into thinking that you were inside the game and then suddenly the pixels seemed very realistic and lifelike and immersive. And the guns were controlled with movements and motions and not buttons and toggles and sticks. And just like that, in the blink of an eye, an entire genre of video games changed radically. Since then, they really haven't changed that much either. Much like its predecessors, it's evolved, grown some features, and been tweaked and improvised to be better and sharper and lower latency and have more feedback, but overall, VR shooters have remained, well, really mostly the exact same. And then there's Veil. And it's really remarkable. You might be thinking, but but Gramsci, I've seen footage of Veil gameplay, and it still just looks like another VR shooter to me. And you're at least half correct. It is still, fundamentally, just another VR shooter. But it's also not. Let me explain. The parts of the game that you physically experience, the full body avatars, the guns, the explosions, the gunshots, these are only the parts of the game that you see and hear and feel the difference of. But behind what you can see and hear and feel, there's a lot going on underneath a blanket of coding that no one except the developers can see. And this is what truly makes Veil so much different from other VR games, and what I think makes what they're doing such a fundamentally important part of taking VR shooters and the entire VR gaming industry to the next level. So what is it exactly? What is this mysterious X factor that Veil seems to have over other VR games? In summary, netcode. Netcode is the viscous fiber that holds all the bones and muscles of the structure of the game together during online play. The parts of the game that impact how much latency a user experiences during online play, how much audio-visual lag they experience while connected, how stable their connection is, how well the game functions and serves the player during intense online play. Which is arguably the most important part of playing any online game, especially a shooting game where gun battles are made and broken by how many tenths of a second it takes for someone to react to stimuli. When the difference between winning and losing is that small, yeah, you bet it makes a difference. 
The problem is that all the VR shooters that have come out to date struggle with their netcode, which leads to some, we'll just say, very incredulous situations. Situations that seem unfair, or they seem impossible because if not for netcode problems, they would be. Think about it like this, the part that really differentiates shooting games from any other genre is the gun battles and gunplay. The fact that everyone in the game is on relatively equal footing with either the same or similar weaponry that are comparable to each other in power and speed. Which means the focus for these game mechanics are the reaction times and skill levels of the individual players as well as how well they can communicate or coordinate with their teammates. It's predictable. It's balanced. And everyone is given the exact same opportunity to win or lose. So when you take away or muddle one of the core parts of that experience that allow it to remain fair and balanced, that allow it to remain stable and glitch free, that allow it to remain predictable, well, in a way, it kind of takes away from the fun of playing a shooter to begin with. And it's not like I'm pointing the finger at any one VR game. Every single multiplayer VR shooter out there suffers from some level of poor optimization on their netcode. For some, it's not as noticeable, for others more so. Beyond just the boring coding side of things, they're taking steps towards adding social elements to the game, planning for an expansion into the metaverse, and optimizing to more sustainable and consumer-friendly sales models. And this is what makes Veil vale so special. This is what leads me to making this video and thinking that there is so much more to Veil vale than meets the eye. Because there is. There really is way more to Veil vale than what you can just see on the surface as another VR shooter. Don't get me wrong, it is just another VR shooter, but it also isn't. Because there is a lot more that goes into making a game and developing it than meets the eye. Because there is so much more under the surface of what is observable than you could ever fully comprehend. And sometimes the parts that make a game so special are the ones that you can't even see. That's all the time we have this week, ladies and gents. Huge shout out and massive thank you to X-Labs for supplying me with the key to experience their game and help them do some play testing. If you enjoyed the video, do be sure to do the stuff and things with buttons, liking, and whatnot because YouTube and stuff. Also be sure to check out X-Labs here on YouTube, Twitter, or even in their Discord. I'll post the links for all that in the description so that you can stay up to date on news and happenings and whatnots with Vale in the future. If you're still watching, I appreciate you more than you will ever know. I'm going to go on and get out of here. I got some shooting to do. I love each and every one of you beautiful feather muckers. Ramsey out.